to become a man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, wow. So you know, be, being that that happened at such a young age, and like you said, you know, you had your parents and you had the game of basketball. What what advice would you give to someone who who? What well, that's a reality for them when their friends are dying, when they're faced with those type of challenges of gang, of joining gangs, and selling drugs. What was it about your environment that kept you out of that? The after school activities, um, we didn't really have great things such as switch dreams when I was growing up, but we had, you know, the YMCA that they, they grasped us. Um, if we were walking down the street and nothing was around, they grabbed us by our shoulders and say, come here and, you know, let's go, you know, clip or, you know, we have computers here. So it was a lot of after school activities. Um, during school, they kept us occupied and I was just grateful to have great people around me. Good. So, what about even now? So even when you're on that level, and then you go to the highest possible level that there is for basketball. What things did you have to change, and what things did you keep the same? My whole life, basketball-wise, I was always considered the man. Mm -hmm. And when I became a professional, I had to grow up. It pretty much took me backwards because I had to become a boy again uh -huh. because people was before me. So I had to learn my role and um, put in the hard work to eventually move up to the next spot. Mm. Okay, so I, when I was doing research on you, I, I was on Google and I saw that you was defending LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Now how was that, I mean, since you're a professional, you're probably not impressed, but for me, I'm a, I'm a fan of the game. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the extent of my skills, though. I'm a great fan. Mm -hmm. How was it defending somebody like LeBron James and then going back to the west side and seeing people who, you know, who can't identify with it. Because, like, when I first went to college, I would come back, tell my friends about college, and they didn't really, couldn't really put their hands around what it was. It, it, it just sounded like it was someplace that really didn't exist. How was it sticking people like LeBron James? Because what, what position you play? Shooting guard. Shooting guard. So you sticking people, you sticking all of the top players, mm -hmm. the Seth Curry's, LeBron's, Monte Ellis's. That's your assignment for the night. Yes, sir. And that's really how you put in food on the table. You're not getting it. They're not saying we need you to drop 30. We just need you to contain somebody who can't be contained or, or whatever. How was it doing that? Um, a lot of practice. Um, and like I said, because growing up in Chicago, we have the Chicago Pro Am. Mm -hmm. I've been playing in that league since I was a freshman in high school. So I, I wasn't afraid of a big, you know, big name person or a big face person that you see all the time on TV. Mm -hmm. It was something natural and it was my opportunity to show that I belong in the NBA and when they presented themselves, I uh, attacked it. Okay. How important was, was going to school uh, for you in terms of uh, graduating from college and providing you with, you know, the right people to hang around with? Going to school was very important. Um, I had a mother that said what she meant and meant what she said. I had a father that did everything my mother said, so anywhere it go, <laughs> education was first. Yeah. Um, my mom was a teacher aide um, during my time of um, growing, and the things that my brothers went through before me, she brought it home and gave it to the younger kids, me and my sister. And I was always ahead, <laughs> ahead of um, the classes I was in for the most part until I went to Hubbard, which was totally culture, a culture shock because it was um, multiracial, multicultural, so we had to adjust yeah. from, um, you know, the norm. And, you know, in the beginning, my grades slacked a little bit, but once I got ahead of it, once um, the, the tutoring was, you know, part of everyday life, um, my coaches made sure we did after school, um, I was ready to get into the real world. Um, College was something that probably only two people in my family ever completed, yeah. and I wanted to be the third. I, I attacked the head on, and when that time came, I just wanted to put a smile on my mom's bottom face. Good. Okay, so this is Othius Jefferson. He's a prime example of not giving up. Uh, went through a lot of adversity, not only in this neighborhood. Um, went to Hubbard High School. What other high school? Western House, my freshman year. Western House, we remember Western House from back in the day when it was basketball power house with the, the Bailey brothers, I think it was. Pretty much. That's when I was coming up. And then after that, I went to UIC and Robert Morris, played ball overseas, played for the Wizards, San Antonio. I mean, how, how many years have you played in the league? Three. Three years in the league. So you're looking at uh, somebody who was, who's played basketball at the highest level possible. Most people don't even make their high school.